Let's now uncomment section two and see what will require us to create in order to make it compile and work. Let's uncomment that select the section and control forward slash. That's a keyboard uh, shortcut. You can see that after this, everything compiles. This is because in the previous section, we actually created a new class called birthday and then we created a version of the constructor in the birthday cl uh, class that takes two integers. And also we define the two accessor methods, get month and get day. So now things seem to work quite nicely. However, it only compiles. It doesn't really mean it will work as expected at runtime. So remember, the requirement told us we should see some output like this when we execute the code. But is it really the case? Why don't we try? Okay. Go back to Eclipse and now let's just execute the code now that it compiles. If you do that, you will see that you got some funny output like this, like a birthday at some looks like an address. So this means whenever we are trying to say bd string, remember to string is a method that is available to available at the object class. And object class is the superclass or parent class of every class in Java. So the birthday class by default inherits a version of the to string method from the object class. And the to string method there does something that's very simple. It simply prints out the address that is stored in the variable, or it prints out the address of the birthday uh, objects. So that's why you see the output like this. Okay, let's execute again. So you can, you can see this, which is one address, and this is just a different address because they are different objects. So that's not something we really want. So what we really want to achieve is to have something like this. We want to have something like, uh, uh, rather than just the address, uh, let's say for BD01 uh, over here, you can see from the previous section there, BD01 has been set to be 1 and 11, which means it should be January and the 11th. So that's kind of the output we are expecting over here. Okay, let's make it happen. So in order to fix this, we have to define the two string method. Okay, let, let's define that. Let's go to the uh, birthday class, and then we're going to have the to string method. You can just type to and then control space. You can see the to string method appears on the top of the choice. Click on that. So now means that means we are going to override this method here. So it's actually quite easy. So the conceptually is easy because we have month and we have day. You can see that from the expected output, whatever day we have, it's just going to be the integer itself, but it's actually a string like a January, February, rather than one and two. So what we should do is we should somehow convert from integer into the string. So of course you can use a case statement to do this if you, well, if you want, but for me, I'm just gonna, gonna keep it simple. I'll just if, if, uh, use the if then else, okay? So over here I can say if the month is equal to one. And then I'm gonna say, so let me just have a string variable here. String month is initially just empty string, okay? So I'll say if month is equal to one, I can say M is assigned to January. And else if month equals two, and then it can be February. Well, I'm going to keep going with this. And then eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's see the format again. It's going to be the month followed by a space followed by the day. So I'm going to say return n plus a space and plus the day. Okay. Over here, you can either say this dot day, or you can say uh, this dot get day. doesn't matter which one you do. Okay. I'll just say this dot day. Okay, so now let's can, uh, complete the rest. So we got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, I'll show you that it actually suggests we might need some precondition for the constructor. Well, I'll show you in just a bit. Okay, so we have one here, we have two here, we have three, which should be March, and we also have four. And that should be April. And we have five, that should be May. And we have six, 
uh, that should be June, and we have seven and July, and we have eight, and that would be August, and we have nine for September, and then we have ten, and that should be October, and we have eleven. That should be November, and we have twelve finally for December. Okay, you might be wondering, can we simply put else over here? Which means there should be no other possibility for the integer value. Can we really make such assumption? My answer is no, you cannot, because when the client actually passes the input for the constructor, at the moment we put no constraint on the day and also on the month. Which means if they let's say if a customer they simply say new birthday and then thirteen and then forty five, in which case thirteen and forty five they are both invalid. In this, what should we do, right? So now, let me just make sure the current version here works, and I'll show you how things might go wrong. And then we have to make it perfect by adding a precondition. Okay, I'll do that in just a moment. So I would say just put it back over here, and now so we are done with uh, defining this uh, to string method. So hopefully, uh, the different calls over here to the to string method is going to produce the right output on the console, and then we translate that into J units. Okay, let's execute this test case over here. Okay, things uh, now changes right. Remember, before we override the to string method that is inherited from the object class, before we do that, we'll simply just print out the addresses of the birthday objects. But after we have done that. Uh, the overriding of the two string method, we actually got uh, the uh, um, output that actually tells us the more meaningful way of presenting the uh, birthday over here. Right. So now let's translate this into the uh, J units, and then we'll I'll show you how to add a precondition. Let's go to the uh, test. Okay. Let me just uh, be consistent with the naming. So let's say test one. That's from before. So now let's say test public void test o two. Okay, and remember we also have to put bd one over there. So now we we'll get several birthday here. Okay, so now control a select everything. Control i to make sure the indentation is fixed. Okay, so now here. We just want to assert equals, right? You can see that in the tester that we have over here, this one had with the main method. That's a console application. In the console application, the way we produce output is by printing something to the console. On the other hand, when we talk about this test over here, it's a J unit test case. In which case, we don't want to have any. Interaction with the console, everything should just be automated. So that's why we just say assert equals. So what should we do? We'll turn some string output to the console into some comparison of the string value. So we can say assert equals bd dot to string should be January, and then we should have um, eleven. Okay, something like that. Okay, why don't we just check for this one to make sure it works, and that will do the rest. Okay. If you now simply just execute a test, okay? So like now we got two tests, and they both work, okay? I will now do the rest, okay? Let's do that very quickly. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to have basically uh, uh, eleven more: two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, so now for BD02, it should be February 12th. 12th. And that should be BD02. Let's finish, uh, fix this first. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12th. Okay, February 12th. And then what about BD03? It should be March 13th. And for BD04, it should be April 14. 
you can see the way I actually develop is 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, I'll just follow that, okay? So April, May, June, and then July, August, September, October, and then November, and December. Okay, so 14, and then 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Okay, let's double check. You can see typing this the first time is okay, but if you have to keep typing this every time, and also to run this and check the output on the menu, manually on the screen, that's very tedious in the console. Okay, let's do that. Okay, maybe I made some typo there. Okay, let's see. So this one should be February. Okay, let's see what's going on here. It could be that if I go by the birthday over here, I might have made a typo. Exactly, you can see. It should be F-E-B-R-U-A-R-Y. -B -F -E -B -R -U -A -R -Y. Okay, that's a typo. Okay, we just, uh, just comment. Okay, let's check again. Oh, that's a console output. Let's go back to the test. Run that. Okay, so now everything compiles. Okay, now I want to show you one more thing for this uh, current video. Let's have a look at, let me just re review what the issue might be. So if you look at the uh, toString method over here, you can see the way I did it, I say if, else if, else if, and then over here I say else if 12, and typically if I, what if, can, can it be the case that month is neither of the 12 values from 1 to 12? Can it be the case? Currently, it is possible because the way we initialize the month and day is by passing the month and day in the constructor. And over here, you can see that there's no check on the validity of the month and day. For example, month should be between 1 and 12, and day should be between 1 and, 30, uh, and 31. There's no such thing. So things like this may happen. For example, I might say, uh, for the illustration purpose, let me put it like here, okay? I might have over here, birthday, and then also invalid birthday. New birthday over here, let's say 13 and then 39. Okay, and then I'm going to say assert equals. Actually, to be honest, when you say assert equals, you actually, you just don't know what to what to have, right? So why don't we try over here? For, so this is this is actually not so good, but I just want for illustration. If I just send that out dot print line, and then I'll just say invalid BD. I just want to see what's gonna be printed out. Okay, let's just try that. If you execute a JU test, not only that we'll get a test report, but also we'll get some printout to the console. This is best style, but it's only for illustration purpose. Don't learn that, okay? If I do that, you will see that I got empty space and then 39. It seems like 39 has been set as the day, so that's why we got 39 over here. But 13 does not correspond to any of the 12th month. So somehow if you go back to the birthday, to string method over here, you can see that over there, string was initially an empty string, and it doesn't satisfy any of the else if if branches. So that's why it will remain to be empty. In that case, we got empty string plus a space and plus 39. That's why you see that console output over there. Okay, if you see that again, you'll see that simply empty space, empty string with empty space and then 39. This is not acceptable, of course. However, in some way, we should not rely or make the assumption that the client is going to behave when they set the uh, month and day. So what we can do is we can add a precondition to the birthday class. So this is how we can do. So we can say that if the month, let's say if one is less than equal to month and month is, uh, is less than or equal to 12 and one is less than or equal to day and day is uh 
less than or equal to 31. That's the biggest one you can get. Let's not worry about the combination. I know that maybe sometimes you got, for example, January only got 31 days, but for Fe February only got 28 days. Let's not worry about the combination, okay? You can uh, feel free to do it to make it more robust. Uh, for now, that'd be, for illustration purpose, that'll be enough. So this is the case where the month and day are valid. In this case, we can set it up. Okay, that's what you can do. Otherwise, we will throw some illegal argument exception. Okay, that's what you can do. Okay. I should type the new here. Okay, that's what we have. Of course, here, I just, for the if condition here, the if condition tells us what a valid condition is for month and day. You could have just uh, specify the negation, logical negation of this to say either, well, this is one possibility over here. I'll just comment it out. I'll just show you an alternative version over there. Okay, I can say if either month is less than one, is less than one, or month is larger than 12, or the day is less than one, or the day is larger than 31. In that case, I can also, in this case, I should throw the illegal argument exception. And then, otherwise, that means it is valid. Okay, you can see over here, this is a valid, invalid condition. And over here, this is a valid condition, but both ways are equivalent. So you can choose the one you prefer. Okay, let me just keep this version over here. Okay, so now if I go back to the uh, test over here, I can now just do a separate test for your, for the completeness. So I can say at test public void test 02. I will just say violation, okay? So just as like a bonus uh, exercise, uh, bonus uh, check for us, okay? So let me put it here. So now what do we expect? When we do this particular uh, uh, object creation, we expect some illegal argument exception to occur. So we can say try over here, and then we can put this line over there. You learned that from before, how you can test for expected precondition violation. We can say catch, illegal argument exception here. And then in this case, it is expected, if it really occurred, expected, do nothing. Otherwise, if we can reach the next line, that means it does not occur. You can say expected precondition violation did not occur. Okay, so that's uh, that's the how we actually can uh, add a precondition and test it. Okay, let's run a test case again. Okay, so now we got three tests over here, and both of them pass. Okay.